The answer to the question as to why the representative and the savior of man had to be a man couldn't be, say, the archangel or some other angel, or whether why sin couldn't be just forgiven by a nod or a word from God. Why did the Son of God have to become a man? The answer to that is given in the scriptures very simply and very, very clearly. Paul said, by man came death. By man also comes the resurrection from the dead. You must understand that God is holy and just and good. There is no tension, there is no contradiction in the personality of God, or, uh, if I may put it this way, um, among the characteristics or the attributes of God. In other words, his justice isn't fighting his love, and his love isn't fighting his justice. His justice is a loving justice. His uh, love is a just and holy love. Uh, there is a harmony, perfect harmony in God. Now keep that in mind, because... When God in love moves to save sinners, he cannot move unjustly. If God were to inflict the punishment of human sin on an angel, how would we ever be able to defend his justice? It would be a double injustice of having the guilty go free while the innocent suffers. By man came sin, by man came death. Man's predicament is the product of man. And the answer to human disobedience to God's law has to be human obedience. Now, not one of us can produce that obedience. And this is where the love of God, the goodness and kindness of God comes in, in meeting the standards of his own justice, by man must come the answer to disobedience and sin and death. And so God sent his own son into the world to become flesh, as the Bible puts it, to take a true human nature into union with himself so that in a true humanity, a true human body, and a true human soul, he would live a life of obedience to God's law and die a death of sacrificial atonement so that he would not only meet the precept but pay the penalty of the broken law. The book of Hebrews takes this up. In chapter 1, it emphasizes that Jesus Christ is truly God. In chapter 2, it emphasizes that Jesus Christ is truly man. And why? Did he become a man? Well, at the end of that chapter, it says it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren for various reasons. First, only as a man could he be tempted. Second, only as a man could he suffer. Only, therefore, as a man could he sacrifice and be our great high priest. That's something that the book of Hebrews goes on to discuss. Offering himself a sacrifice for sin, it could only be as a true man. That's the real reason why it was necessary for the Savior to become a man. No one else could ever be the representative of the Savior of or the Redeemer of sinners.